Alrighty, welcome to the second series of the free live webinars that I'm giving here. And on the first uh, live webinar, I talked about how to select a profitable niche. Um, and that's really the key to this, is that when you get started out, you want to you want to know, you want to go through methodically and, and select a profitable niche. Very similar to selecting um, your first product, say for an Amazon store or an e-commerce store, which is very popular right now, by the way. Uh, but the process is very similar. I know because uh, about 13 months ago, we started our own Amazon store. And so the process is very similar. The, the main difference between, say, an Amazon store and open it up and a paper call is that you don't have the inventory to buy. That's where people <laughs> don't realize it is that with uh, a Amazon store, it takes a, t a tremendous amount of inventory, especially when you pick the right product. And then if you want to really grow your business, you need to really kind of stay income free for the next, you know, at least a year or so uh, from your profits and stuff. Uh, and that's not the way it is here at all. So you don't have inventory to buy um, and you can start you know, living off of the profits that you make. Anyways, uh, so and on this one here, we're going to do a repeat of last night. Um, yeah, which is uh, on page SEO based on the feedback and stuff. I'm going to run it just a little bit differently and more efficiently. Uh, and then next week I'm going to do backlink. So off page SEO. So don't think that on page SEO is boring or unnecessary. It's actually the most important thing. And I'm following and doing these things in logical order. So with that, I know a lot of you know my backdrop story, so I'm going to give a very, very short, brief intro on that. I'll, I'll just buzz through it really, really, really quickly, uh, not to bore uh, those of you who have already heard it on here. So what you're going to learn tonight, basically, is this is just a segment of how I run my uh, paper call business, uh, which I've done you know full-time for since uh, 2009. Um, these are a series of that, and today I'm teaching on, on page SEO. Okay, so I'll stick around. I'm trying to keep these pre the initial kind of educational presentation uh, down to around 35 to 40 minutes, and then I'll answer questions for about an hour and 15 minutes, hour and 20 minutes is what I've been doing. So it's been working good, but getting uh, good feedback with it. Um, the link there, I'll put it in the chat box later if you don't catch it right now. Uh, it's for the future uh, training webinars to sign up for. <clears throat> Alrighty, so um, I heard a great quote the other day, as, um, and I was uh, reading a good book, and it said that you know you can uh, being 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 uh, how did it go? Working out is hard work. Being fat is hard work. You choose your battle. Um, and there's so much truth to that and that it that really expands out to really all areas of your life, not just compartmentalizing uh, those things to health and fitness because you really can't do that. I really believe what you do in one area of your life, you do in all areas of your life. When you truly become um, a master at it in your own self, right? <clears throat> uh, it's, it's really hard to... Uh, maintain and sustain you know a high level of physical fitness and then the other areas of your era, the other areas of your life are falling apart your business your relationships your personal growth uh and by the way um you there's a direct relationship between your success and your personal growth rarely does your success exceed your personal growth so if you're not already getting up early in the morning and reading for 20 or 30 minutes every day i would start that right away um <clears throat> but anyways, and there's, you know, um, I'm, I've been, I've been poor, which I'm going to tell you about, uh, very poor, uh, and being poor is hard work. It really is. And it sucks. Um, being, uh, you know, rich and wealthy and having the freedoms and stuff also carries its own kind of responsibility. It's also hard work as well. And I would say in that same respect, you got to choose your battles. So, uh, if you really want to make a change in your life and all areas of your life, uh, you know, you really got to look at what you're doing now and you got to do things differently. Um, I did things the same way for 41 years in a row. Um, and that's a picture of me on the left at 41 years of age. Uh, and then the picture on the right is just recent, but, <clears throat> um, I had uh, a lot of issues for the majority of my life. I was, I would consider myself a very late bloomer on all levels, uh, emotionally, physically, spiritually, financially, 
um, and so on. Uh, right here is 1982 Mercedes diesel. I lived in the back seat of this for quite a while. Uh, I couldn't afford the, the diesel fuel for it, uh, but luckily these things are very easy to convert and run off of um, uh, vegetable oil. So I had an arrangement with the local uh, taco restaurant that would pick up their uh, vegetable oil. I'd clean it up, filter it out, and uh, pour it right into this beast right here, and I, I, I could drive around. Um, <clears throat> I obviously had some issues. I had some eating issues, some drinking issues, um, in a, unemployment issues, <laughs> personal issues. Um, I was, you know, anytime someone's living in the back of their back of their seat of their car in, uh, you know, um, arguably, uh, you know, one of the most, um, I guess, financially free countries in the world uh, to some degree, um, you, you definitely have some issues going on. Uh, it's, it's not unemployment or the fact that gas prices are gas prices are high or, or the price of stamps just went up by two cents. Um Anyways, I came across a contest uh, called Transformation run by Bill Phillips. Bill Phillips is the original founder uh, and creator uh, of, um, of Body for Life and the Body for Life products. And uh, I entered that contest. I entered the contest, you know, honestly, primarily because it was a first prize of $50,000. I needed it. That was a primary reason. Uh, but the uh, other reasons were because, um, you know, it... it that's something I needed. I needed in my life. I knew I needed a big change. So anyways, long story short, I ended up winning the contest. That was in 2009. Uh, this is his best-selling book. That's my image up there on there uh, on, on the cover. And my whole stories are in chapter 13 and 14. Um, I since went on to speak uh, around the country uh, as a full-time uh, uh, employee of the transformation community. Um, and uh, I got to share the stage with... Lots of really fantastic people, 9-11 uh, survivors, firefighters, uh, Paula Abdul. She has an amazing transformation story. A lot of people don't know it. Um, and, and anyways, uh, I started hanging around with these really uh, talented and very wealthy people, very high-driven type A people. Um, and, you know, you've, you've heard it before, but it's totally true. Um, you, you know, you, you, your results and your income really do... Um, are directly related to the five closest people that you hang around with. <clears throat> and uh, only because it changes your perspective of what's possible. They just kind of give you permission about what's possible. And uh, like Paula Abdul, she's worth well over $330 million. Um, Bill Phillips is you know, almost a billionaire. Um, and some of the other people we're hanging around with. Anyways, I thought, you know what? I, I, I changed my life spiritually. Uh, physically, I made these dramatic events. Why not financially? And so I did. And the first year, and my uh, opened up my own business, which is an offline business. This is the bottom of a tax return. I made one point six four six million and some change. Um, and that was running an offline business, uh, bo uh, uh, really a kind of a boutique business where we did everything for a local business in any niche. We would we, we would take on any client. Didn't matter whether. You know, they were pest control, dentist, doctor. It didn't matter. We would just take them on. Everyone was welcomed, um, which was a mistake, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, and we did everything. We did, their, we did their SEO. We did their Google AdWords. We did their social uh, marketing. Um, we, we, we did their con the, we'd improve their site conversion rates. We do their SEO, their Google places. We, we, we did it all. Uh, we do video marketing if they wanted to do video marketing. Uh, and we were very successful at it. Uh, but the problem was is that it wasn't scalable to the level I wanted to go. And, uh, and I was working literally, you know, sometimes 16 to 20, 22 hours per day. So I, I was literally just living at my desk. Um, and then when I was done working, I'd just literally fall asleep at my desk. Uh, but I did in the first year gain, gain uh, uh, you know, I, got, I, I got noticed by a few people. I got a call one day by Dan Kennedy's office asking me to come down and interview uh, with Dan Kennedy in Ohio for a television show he was doing. It was a television series he was doing about um, uh, uh, millionaires that made it, you know, that made it in, in the recession, which was 2008, 2009. Um, I didn't know who Dan Kennedy was, so I declined. A couple of days later, I got a phone number. I got a call back from the office from somebody else saying, hey, you probably want to Google him and find out who he is. This is a really rare opportunity. Anyways, long story short, I ended up doing that going down. And it was a, a tremendous uh, experience, to say the least. Um, and th this is Mike Keenings in the Digital Cafe. 
was, was invited to come and uh, interview with him uh, about the offline success that I had. Anyways, that's enough of that. So we'll move on. For those of you who heard that before, apologize. I appreciate you sitting through that. So this is, what you're seeing right here is just a sample, a very small sample. I actually have over 3,000 lead gen sites. These, this is just four lead gen sites in one niche. Um, and, uh, and just in October, these four sites, which are not even ranking very well, to be frank with you, they're so of these four, you know, some are on the bottom, very bottom of page one and some are at the top of page two and kind of fluctuate back and forth. There's nothing stellar about this. This isn't some high end niche, like a plastic surgeon or anything like that. I'm not going to re reveal what it is. It's a much lower end, uh, where the ticket item is, um, between 50 and $70, um, um, total revenue per sale. And uh, I think their net is probably would end up being about, um, 40% of that. So it's not a huge ticket item at all, uh, but it is extremely profitable. Um, and this is on autopilot. We don't have to deal with customers. I don't got to deal with their websites. I don't got to deal with their Google AdWords. If Google comes up with an algorithm change, I don't get any phone calls. There's none of that kind of stuff. Um, and this is very easy to do. So I gave this example as something that's achievable for a lot of people who maybe never earned any money online. Uh, which, uh, you know, I've been one of those people too. And if someone showed me they made, you know, $6 million, they'd be like, yeah, that's cool. But to me, where I am, that level of thinking is just not quite there. So, but this is four sites. Okay. So each one on average, you can kind of do the math on average, um, you know, earns, you know, a little over, you know, what is it? About six, $700 per month. Um, like I said, we have many, many more sites. This is actually one of our other sites or one of my, I'm only in, I'm only in two niches. The previous slide is just four sites in one niche. Uh, this is, we're in two niches. This is one of them. Um, and, um, you know, we have a, we have a lot of sites. So, uh, but this is unconceivable for a lot of people, but for some of you who are there or can kind of dream big, this is what's possible. And there's literally thousands upon thousands of niches out there. If you attended the first webinar, I gave you a download of 2000 niches that I collected on an Excel sheet. Um, and I showed you how you could take those 2000 niches and divide it up into 6,000 and keep in mind, I'm only doing this in two niches and we are probably the number one paper call company in, in the world, as far as the amount of revenue that we do per year and the amount of calls that we um, sell. So anyways, um, so how to set up a, uh, a page SEO for a local niche so you can rank number one. The first thing to SEO for these local niches, first of all, there's a couple of things. Um, what I'm going to be sharing with you uh, today, tonight, or wherever you are in the world is I'm going to be sharing with you, these are real world tactics. I have over three, we have over 3,000 sites. I have over 34 employees. That's what I've been doing this for five years plus. So this is stuff that's based on actual business knowledge, not on a course I purchased, not on some, not on what Moz said. What they say is a lot of bullshit, by the way. I'm just, I'm just letting you know that they don't have 3,000 sites of data like, like uh, we, we do. Um, and you're probably going to, you know, a lot of you have probably p purchased other SEO courses, which I would, I would encourage you to expand your education out there. That's good. But always remember to kill your guru. Okay. Um, a lot of good books out there say that in different ways, kill your guru. Um, so you might, I, I'm going to share with you some stuff here. There's nothing like, like totally weird or abnormal on here, but from what your perceived reality may be of what on-page SEO should be, it may look different. And you may think to yourself, oh, but that's not what blank says, who's the so-called expert. That so-called expert, if you really examine it, probably, more than likely, is in the business of selling you stuff and selling you SEO. I'm just saying, there's a lot of that in that business, so it's kind of ugly. Uh, but anyways, so with that, uh, I'm not here to argue with anybody. I'm just telling you this is what works. And there's probably other things that work too. But this is what works with 3,000 sites and a multi-million dollar company. So what you want to start with is you start with your list of keywords that you want to rank with. So this is like a continuation of our, our first webinar, okay? So uh, I'm going to go over plugins. We use a very basic number of plugins on here. Uh, how to set up a home page and to rank for it. We're going to go over the keyword density. It's probably not at all what you're thinking it might be or been taught. Images, alt text 
uh, zip codes and areas serviced. And one other caveat here I want to add is that ranking for local sites like a dentist or a plumber in, you know, in Boise, Idaho is completely different game than ranking for some kind of affiliate site or e-commerce site or some kind of national travel site or something like that. It's, it's a completely, completely different game. So keep that in mind too. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you our silo structure, how we do it. Um, and then how often we add content to our sites and that our, our keyword density on here and then our anchor text and some more on that. And again, this is, I want to keep the conversation to on page SEO. I know a lot of people want to just kind of jump right to off page SEO. That's next week. Okay. Um, you, you, you can deliver if you have really good on page SEO, that means you got to deliver less. Uh, uh, backlinks, okay, which is really where the work is, all right? So uh, domains, let's start with domains because that's really where it starts on here, right? You're going to buy a site, you've already picked a niche, you got your keyword list out, now you're going to buy your niche, or you're going to buy your domain, right? So let's go over uh, the kind of domains that you want to get. I'm, I'm a stickler at this now. I've played the game for a while and I've played every angle at it and I've tried to take shortcuts before and something to keep in mind and write this kind of write, write this down. Maybe you can write down in better words than I can say it, but you want... Um, you know, taking the long road will always get you to your destination in less time. Taking the long road will always get you to your destination in less time. In other words, don't try to take shortcuts along the way because you may not even end up at your destination. If you do, you'll end up there late. So anyways, get dot coms. That's it, period. Get the dot coms. Get the, the highest top level domains that you can according to wherever you're located. If you're located in the UK, then it's going to be dot com dot UK. If you're located in Spain, where I am right now, then it's going to be ES. Um, and if you're in Denmark, you know, it's going to be DK and so on. Just get the top level. Don't mess with any of the others. You know, don't fall in love with a particular, uh, you know, d domain that you absolutely have to have, and it's not available, so you got to get something, you know, a, a lesser than a top-level domain. Here's examples of keywords, kind of domain stuffing that you want to avoid. These are ones that you want to avoid. Um, so let's say you're in the bail bonds niche, and you typed into GoDaddy or wherever you buy your domains, and you found out that bailbondsphoenix.com is available. It's probably not, but if it was, I know it's very tempting to buy. Don't. Just avoid it, okay? Um, let's say you're in the plumber niche, and you find plumberssandiego.com. It's just like the main keyword that you want to rank for, right? Don't buy it. <laughs> don't do it. Just don't do it. Trust me on this one. Don't do it. Uh, or chiropractors in San Diego, because you can't find chiropractor San Diego anymore, but you could find chiropractors in San Diego, and you've searched on Google AdWords, and there's a lot of uh, searches for that too. Don't buy it. It's just way too spammy looking. If you make a little bit of a mistake anywhere, it's just going to red flag you like in insanity, and then you're going to be stuck on page 10 for the rest of your life, okay? Don't do it. Google's on, 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 you know, Google's on this. They know what's going on. Uh, or, you know, you go, oh, I'd love to, my main keyword is Bail Bonds Phoenix. I don't have that as a domain. How about if I try to be sneaky and, and sneak in the uh, abbreviation of the state at the end? Bail Bonds Phoenix AZ. Don't do it. Let me show you domains you'd, you would, you'd want to purchase, okay? So here's one if you're in the bail bonds niche. This would be a great one because this is what a real business owner would 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 look for. Get out of jail now.com. Big two thumbs up on my end. Uh, bail bonds brothers.com. Hey, it's got your keyword in it. Um, and it's something natural on there, like a bail bonds brothers on that. Um, so that one's cool with me. Uh, how about Cairo? Backdoctor.com. That's that's cool too. That's that's a good one. It's not spamming. Uh, back pain be gone. That's a good one for for a chiropractic lead, lead gen site. Uh, Cairo back clinic. That's good too. Okay, so you get the idea in here. Or plumbingbrothers.com or uh, drain grain drain clog team that would be a plumber site on that end of it. So those are the kind of domain names that you want to get top level. Avoid the spammy keyword stuffing ones, okay? 
Trust me. Uh, and I know there's there's some out there ranking right now. And I'm going to give you some example of a three-year-old plus site, dead site that we have that we're not using anymore uh, that I'm going to show you as an example later that is keyword stuffed and is breaking all the rules here. But keep in mind, that's been up for three years. It is ranking on page one. Uh, we've sent a tremendous amount, not a tremendous amount, but a very good amount of high, high quality backlinks to it. And what I'm telling you, 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 you don't want to invest the kind of resources and stuff we did in order to get that site to rank. And uh, anyways, okay, so um, let me check the, the chat box, make sure that my sound and audio and all that kind of good stuff is good. And because uh, we did have some of that. Okay, good. All right, cool. All right, still got my cursor on the last question. I'm going to do the questions in order, so your question will not get missed. Uh, I'm just going to continue to march on here, and then towards the end, I will spend uh, a lot of time with the questions. That's actually my favorite part. Okay, so back to the presentation. So let's say for in this example here, let's say that I've decided I'm going to jump into the plumbing niche. Um, and there's different sub-niches within the plumbing niche, but I'm just going to say kind of the general plumbing niche in the Phoenix area. So based on uh, our first webinar that we did together, um, we would pick about five keywords. Okay, so the, here's my five keywords. Um, and if you'll notice something on here, these five keywords, they, they, they meet the criteria of 250 or more average searches per month. And they, and they exceed that. So everything's good so far. Um, if you really... Um, break down these five keywords and I want my home page to rank for these uh, 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 keywords um, I need to break them down and, and when I break them down what are we really looking at we're looking at the word plumber right because plumber Phoenix and we have just plumber that's my actually my number one keyword and, and by the way that's plumber 364 uh, people from an IP address in Phoenix typing in the word plumber okay um, Plumbing is another one, okay. Phoenix is another word, and the word in. So what I need to do is that I need to make sure that on my home page, I've got 500 plus words of original, engaging content, okay, um, that has these words in it: plumber, plumbers, plumbing, Phoenix, and in. Not plumbers, Phoenix. Not trying to keyword stuff plumbing, Phoenix. Uh, or plumbers in Phoenix, not trying to keyword stuff the article, just make sure to write it naturally, make sure that those keywords, plumber, plumbers, plumbing, Phoenix, and in is in there. That's all that you need, okay? Um, and don't try to repeat them. In fact, try to, your goal should try to get those, those words in there one time and one time only, okay? That's, Google will pick it up, trust me. I, we know we've done this enough times. Don't try to repeat it or you get a 500% keyword density or all that kind of bullshit that you see out there in the courses. You know, I don't even know what's out there in the courses. I don't even bother to read them anymore. But, you know, back in the day when I did, it was 3-5% or whatever, a 3% keyword density. No, no, screw that. That's not what it is. Google is smart enough. They don't go, oh, you only have your keyword in here once. Therefore, you're not going to rank for it. No, baloney. You can have your keyword broken up. If your keywords are long tail, you can have your broken up within your home page and you're going to rank for that when done properly, okay? Uh, and it's more natural and it's it's smarter that way. That way you stay off of this Google spam radar, okay? Because let's let's just talk about SEO and the Google alg algorithm for a minute. Um, I, I would guesstimate that 99% of every single website in the entire world that that, that is on page one in the top 10 is gaming the system. They're doing something to manipulate Google's algorithm. That's just reality. That's what it is. So whatever you're doing is manipulating it, okay? And then they're trying to figure out, okay, really what their alg algorithm is doing is they're saying, okay, how can we filter in people that look as natural as possible, even though we know nobody is natural, okay? <laughs> All right. How do we how do we show somebody who who looks natural but is not come through and then give our users good experience? 
that's what they're trying to do, okay? That's really what it is because nobody is playing the game without gaming it. Got it? Okay, so, um, and then we're looking at, you know, original content. I've gone through that, these words. We're looking at uh, two to three images. Uh, you want to use natural alt text. So on the images, at least currently right now, Google is unable to, you know, with their algorithm, look at the image and tell what it is. So they have an option to put a description um, on the image that the uh, Google box or the spiders read. And they go, oh, okay, thanks for describing the photo to me. Now I know what it's about and it is relative to your site and the content on the page. Thank you very much. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna avoid keyword stuff in that, okay? So here's an example of that uh, if, if you had an alt tag on here on this particular example that I'm giving now, um, if you said in the alt tag, are plumbers fixing a drain in Phoenix? Okay, that's very natural. And hopefully the picture is, you know, somebody, you know, a plumber, uh, you know, fixing a drain, you know, and then in the alt tag, that's what you put. Are plumbers, that's when your keyword plumbers, right? Another one, your keyword is in, and another one is Phoenix. And you've got them, you've, you've got your main keywords in there. You're, you're totally fine. But what the tendency is for an SEO person or somebody obviously gaming the system is just put in the alt tag, plumber Phoenix. Nah, wrong. Okay. Google's smarter than that. They start seeing enough of that, you know, a domain, plumbers Phoenix, Arizona, alt tag, plumber Phoenix, next alt tag for a next photo. Plumbers in Phoenix, blah, 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 you know, and then the, uh, the anchor text is all plumbers in Phoenix, all this kind of stuff. Guess what? You ain't never going to show up on page one, okay? That's, that's just what it is. Okay, so you might have a, you know, a second picture on that end of it. may not even have your keyword in it. It just may have keywords that are related to what your site is. So your second picture you might have in the alt tag because the picture this is what the picture is, is displaying, is uh, replacing a hot water heater. How about that? Replacing a hot, hot water heater. Maybe replacing a hot water heater for our happy customers in the Phoenix Valley. Well, that would be a natural way to, to describe that photo. You know, um, not, you know, 24-hour emergency plumber. It <laughs> doesn't work, okay? Don't get spammy. Google's on top of that. They know it. They know what's going on. All righty. Uh, let's go on to the next expand out here. Okay. So um, on your home page below your 500, you know, plus words of original well-written content, um, your non-spammy uh, content that's not keyword stuffed. Okay. Uh, below that, and I'm going to give you uh, some real life examples. You can go out and take a look at these too. So um, just absorb in the information now, and then um, you can also watch the replay later as well and ask questions towards the end, of course. Um, you're going to put in, in kind of gray text so it doesn't take away from the eye the black text that you've got of your content. Uh, we're not trying to game the system here. We're just, you know, a lot of local businesses, most of them do this. Uh, you're going to put in gray text the zip codes that you service and any of the surrounding cities that you do as well. Uh, and that's simply because people do type in um, the, you know, what the service that they're looking for, you know, plumber, chiropractor, um, and then their zip code. And Google knows this, and, the, and they have set the alg algorithms for this. So if you have that on your page and everything matches up and everything's fine, um, then when somebody types in uh, some keywords that that you should be ranking for plus the zip code they'll find the zip code on your page and you'll turn up in the results okay uh, then below that here i've got a list this is a short list but you should have a longer list than this of related keywords that you're going to use for and i'll show you how we're going to use them we're going to use them for post ideas you know articles and for anchor text we're not going to be we're rarely 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 going to be using our five main keywords for anchor text. Okay, rarely, rarely, rarely. That's another thing that, and we'll talk more about that when we do the, the off-page SEO, the, the, the uh, backlinky, but on-page it's just as important because you can do anchor text on-page. I'll show you how we do that. But this list on here, this is these are just, these are all keywords, these are all words 
that a plumber would would have on their site. They would have articles about these things. Um, they would they would link anchor text between different articles and home pages using these words on here: blockage, uh, clog, drain, sewage, hot water heater, water heater. Uh, I'm just going to skip through some of these: toilet repair, emergency plumbing, plumbing services, shower, uh, basement leaks, uh, bathroom sinks, uh, plumbing snake, and so on. Where did I get this list? Very easy. I just I got it from Google, so I'm just gonna put this slide down for a second. Um, and a Google keyword, <clears throat> Google keyword planner, and I've just typed in for the location of Phoenix and just the areas right around Phoenix, like Peoria, Tempe, Macy, Chandler, Gilbert. You know these, these kind of areas, the metro area. If I just type in the word plumber, period. Okay, um, then it gives me some AdWord group, AdWord group ideas, and that's where I got these. So here's the word toilet, and if I were to open this up, there would be 17 words related to toilet. Uh, plumbing contractors, I'd have that. Plumbing services, uh, garbage disposal, I didn't have that on the list. That's a good one to have on there. Um, drain cleaning, then I'd open this up. It'd give me 10 different versions of drain cleaning, and so on. This is, this is where I got this list, okay? So, you know, I didn't think it up or had to do some great research for it. Uh, really important because we're going to use that for anchor text, writing articles, content, uh, and we'll use it throughout the uh, lifetime that we have the website. Okay, so that's this creating this list right here is uh, very important when you're doing your keyword, keyword research because you'll use it for the lifetime of your site. It's very critical. All righty, so let me just... Boom over there. Okay, so list of plugins. This will be a short list. We don't get crazy with it, um, and you don't either. But if you want to add to this list, I mean, feel free to. This is just this is what we do, and I'm all about scalability. Okay, because if you think about managing, you know, thousands of sites, and you've got a particular plugin that you need to update or uh, maybe hasn't been around for a while, so now it goes out of service or something like this, or not being updated, or is vulnerable to attacks or whatever. Um, that's not just you know that's that's that problem has now been scaled to the level of thousands. Okay, <laughs> think about that for a second. So that's the reason this is so small, and it's and it's and it's effective, uh, and it's and it's about scalability. So we use an all-in-one SEO pack. Um, I know there's different variations of it. Go ahead and pick whatever one you want. Just try to pick the most stable one that's been around the longest because if they decide to go out to lunch and not come back for a while and you've got you know, 20, 30, 40, 100, 200, 500, 1,000 sites up front out there and you add and you've got to replace all those, you know, uh, I'm sorry, there's not a program in the world that's going to do that. Uh, that's a manual nightmare. Um, we like so, so we like the all-in-one SEO pack, disable comments, and only one other, the Google XML sitemap. That's it. We keep it simple. You want to add more? Go for it. We don't. Okay. Um, just some general rules here to uh, uh, not to do on here is um, no spun con no spun content. Must be original content. Every single page, every article, everything. It's got to be original. Um, when we're looking at our sites, and I'll show you what the site structure, how we do this, uh, but 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 after we, we've got our you know, our niche picked out, we got our homepage out, um, and we got our zip codes below that, and the in the cities or in counties that we're serving, then uh, then we're going to add two new posts per week for the first week, and we just we just upload these all into our WordPress site, and then we just set them up to be uh, distributed and go live. Um, on their own as uh, uh, content that, that will come out and uh, WordPress does that for you. Um, and then um, after that, uh, we had one new post per week for the second month. And then we had two new posts per month for the third month moving forward until we reach the rankings that we want to. Okay. So we just kind of, what we're doing, we're just letting Google, we're saying, Hey, we're the new kid on the block. we got a new site. We know that. Um, we're just trying to, you know, hustle our, our way up the top. 
Um, we're providing good content and good value, so we're not going to be, you know, we're not going to be providing crappy content or spun content. Okay, really important to provide good content. Um, and then we're finished. So this is this is the structure that we use. Um, I'll go over an actual site, and we can kind of click through the links and see how the structure actually works on a on a you know uh, a site. But basically, we use this is a very basic sound structure. It's served us extremely well over the years. Um, so we have our home page in the yellow, and then in the blue below there, we've got posts. Okay, so I've distinguished right away. Notice that page and posts. The posts are in blue, the pages are in yellow. So that's the page, that's our home page. We just got done talking about that. Um, and these are the posts. And the posts want to be about 300 words plus. Um, you want to mix them up and add either um, an image or a video or both or a graph. You want to add something besides just text to it because um, that will be mean, usually will be, uh, mean that it will be richer content. And uh, so post number one in here, excuse me for hitting the mic, uh, post number one, um, how to fix a leaky faucet. That would be our title tag. That would be the title of our post. And the post would be all about how to fix a leaky faucet. And we wouldn't be keyword stopping it at all. Our anchor text would be leaky faucet because that's what the article is about. And, um, and it would be linking back to the home page. Okay. So if somebody clicked on that little blue link with the blue underline on this post and they clicked on it to say, hey, find out how you can get your leaky pocket, uh, <laughs> leaky pocket fix, leaky faucet fix, excuse my language, um, and they clicked on it, it would take them right to our homepage. Okay, makes sense? Uh, same week, second post goes out a couple of days later, post number two, um, you know, how to do a toilet install. So... Um, and our anchor text would be toilet installation because that's what we're talking about. And that anchor text is going to go right back to our home site. You, you see how this makes sense? We're not trying to keyword stuff these things with the five main keywords that we want to rank for. Okay, that's going to get you in trouble 100% of the time. Google is going to know from your page one what you've written on there, um, what you should be ranking for. They just want to make sure now that you're going to, that you're going to have quality content that their end users are going to be most happy with. And their end users are not going to go on there and go, oh, geez, another spammy site. They're really good at that, by the way. Um, post number three, my title of that would be Advantages of a Tankless Water Heater. Dun, dun, dun. Sounds like really exciting, right? Anyways, your anchor text on there would be Tankless Water Heater. I click on it, it goes back where? To your home page. That's it. That's the silo structure. Okay, if you've read other courses out there about silo structures that are more complex and they try to trick you into following the wiki model and all that kind of stuff, I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm just saying they may want to make something more complex to justify what they just charge you for. Just saying. Um, and this same model can be applied to more complex sites where, you know, say for example, what would be a more complex site than, than the one I'm talking about now? It would be in the same niche plumber but say that I wanted to um, let's go back to my keyword list let's say that I wanted to rank for another keyword that I couldn't rank for on my home page right now um, toilet there's a 710 searches in here so there might be something in here that would have you know like a hundred or two hundred searches per, yeah there we go so toilet repair 210 okay I'm not, I can't get my homepage to rank for toilet repair and the other five keywords. So that's where I would create basically a second page, not a post, a second page that would be all about toilet repair. Okay. And it, and it would be worth doing because look, there's two, I would, who, who would guess? There's 210 searches for toilet repair. And guess what? I, I, I can almost guarantee you no one else is trying to rank for that. So you're going to rank for that really fast. You would do a second page for that. You do a second page, same criteria, 500 plus. You treat it just like a homepage, 500 plus words, all original, uh, two to three images on there, user alt tags, user zip codes down below, same exact thing. It'll look just like the homepage, except for now it's about toilet, toilet repair, okay? You'd, you know, you'd list out the various kind of toilet repair that you do. Well, we do toilet installation. We do toilet repairs. We do toilet plumbing. 
Uh, we do. We take care of all toilet problems. We even drain. We even help drain your pl- clogged up toilet. You see what I'm saying? It's not that hard to write that. You got a broken toilet? We're there to fix you. You see, see, it'd be really easy to write a 500 word article and start stuffing in these uh, stuffing in these keywords. What's this one in here? Um, I saw one at 320. What was that? Oh, toilets. Okay. So don't get carried away. With it. Don't go, oh, toilets. That's going to be a buying keyword because all you have to do is, is just type in toilets into the search engines and you're probably not going to get a plumbing site. You, you might get one, but you're probably going to get it more like toilets. So that's not a buying keyword. But the point is, is that when we go back to here, your silo structure, you just have another yellow box here. And I would just start the same process here as I would. But now I'd have articles. Uh, shooting up and anchoring up to there. Okay, so that's how you take the style structure and you can s- expand it out to other pages and stuff. I'll get back to this in a minute. I'm almost done with this and then we'll hit into the questions and answers. Okay, so um, this may seem, this aspect of it may seem very basic to some of you, but, um, and to some of you, it might com- be, seem completely foreign. So um, I need to cover it. So there's three really important things. This is on this is in in your SEO plugin. Uh, that's your title, okay? Your title meta, uh, meta. Your title, 60 characters in it, okay? So um, here's here's my. These are actually 55 characters. It includes the space in the bars here, okay? So all spaces, even the, even the blank ones. And this is the system we follow. It's working very well for us. Very simple. Uh, we try to get in two of our main keywords in the beginning. So one is plumber. That's our number one, right? And then plumbers in Phoenix, that's our number two. And then the name of whatever company. So say our URL was plumbingbrothersllc.com. Then they naturally put in your company name here in, in that order. And that's 55. I got five more characters left, 60 max. Okay. Uh, description. Description on here. I'm going to take those five keywords. I'm going to try to get them in here but make it sound as natural as possible, okay? So uh, call Plumbing Brothers. I mean, that's the name of the company. That was somebody naturally would do. Here's the phone number. We provide full-service, you know, plumber. Uh, we have plumbing, plumber, those are those are big keywords we got in here. And then w- these are other stuff, but this is things that a plumbing company would actually put in. Uh, clogged drain, toilet repairs, remodels, hot water heaters, sewers. We have licensed plumbers in the Phoenix Valley. So in there, if you look at that, I've captured all of my main key, five keywords. Uh, maybe some of them not together, maybe some of them separate, but they're there. Uh, meta tags, there's arguments whether those are even useful or not. Well, guess what? It's, it's there, so it doesn't hurt to put them in. So I just put in my five keywords in there, okay? All righty, so let's... Let's do this. So that's kind of the end of that presentation. The next, the second part of it is, um, or the end of the first part, I should say, is going to be, um, I'm going to take walk you through an actual, a uh, couple of websites that you can take a look at. Um, and then I'll go to questions and answers, and uh, we'll just keep rocking and rolling here. Okay, so um, now normally this is, a, this is a live site, but it's dead because we don't use it. Uh, normally there'd be a video right here. We have a video that would autoplay. Uh, but this is for a, a dog grooming. I know it, 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 it breaks all the rules above here, but um, the site's three years old plus, and uh, we've sent some pretty hefty backlinks to it. So it is on page one for um, um, uh, dog grooming. But nevertheless, don't follow those rules. Uh, follow what I said earlier. But this is the, what you want to look at here is the actual structure. So this way we've got a couple of images, right? Totally cool with the images. Um, We've got uh, we've got our the, the office address, the in gray. You know we're not trying to trick Google or anybody. We're just trying to make it more pleasant to the end users. Like this is what we want them to stay focused on, um, and you know, Google will see the dark text, the light text, the uh, spider just as evenly, and the and the zip codes that we service. Okay, that's it. The video call of action, phone number, call to action. Um, and so where's our silo structure? How does that work? Well, this is a page and we're our posts. Our posts are down here at the very bottom. So you know, our recent posts on here. So uh, keeping, a, uh, keeping health of your dog at the optimum level, right? That sounds like a nice article for somebody who would have a dog grooming site, right? 
So it, it looks natural. We're not trying to keyword stuff this, you know, like, uh, you know, tips for the best dog grooming company in Chicago. We're not, we're not trying to, don't, don't try that kind of stuff, okay? Um, and uh, then we got the words here. We, we do not have an image, which I, I would recommend that you do. And uh, we have actually keyword stuffed the anchor text, which don't do. That's the gear, uh, dog groom in Chicago. That's keyword stuffing. Do not do that. But if I click on that, it goes boom, back where? Back to the home page. And that is the same concept as, uh, where'd it go? Right here. Right? This is my dog grooming uh, Chicago, how to keep a healthy dog. And I clicked on the link and it brought it back to my home page. Okay? Um, oh, one really important thing that I didn't put on the slides that you must have on every single site is you do need to have a, dis, uh, a, a general disclaimer form, a link policy, privacy, terms of agreement on here. Um, and you can just go to this website, doggrooming.net, and you can just go ahead and click on it. Uh, it'll be taken to that. And then you can just copy and paste it in here. Uh, just remove out of here anything that we've got, like, you know, you want to replace your domain with that one, that kind of stuff. Just go through it. But Google does require that you have it. And uh, I can tell you when you first put up a site, and we, and we package these sites up, put them together all at once, and guess what the first pages to get indexed and ranked by Google are 100% of the time. Not the home page, not, not anything else. The disclaimer, the link policy, the privacy policy are always the first ones to rank, even though they're duplicate content. Okay? That tells you that Google's looking for that. Okay? Um, cool beans. So let's go um, on to the questions. Let me just check the time, see how we're doing so far with what I promised. Okay. I said I'd talk for about 45 minutes and I talked for a little bit more. But uh, that, that's cool. So uh, let me go down to the questions and see where we are, make sure there's nothing. Okay, cool beans. So we're good. All right. I'm going right into, right into the chat box, uh, right where I left off, and I'll start answering the questions from there. So Sean asking here, almost every niche has more than five reviews. Um, on my first webinar, I found uh, at least two or three niches that either that has no reviews. So they're out there, uh, but it depends. If there's something like you know, 10 or 15 on average, that's not too bad. Uh, but understand, when I teach you how to get into the Google uh, Maps uh, three-pack now, okay, um, in the course, uh, which as far as I know, nobody in the world knows how to do, okay, uh, without a postcard verification, your phones will literally double, if not more, overnight. And it has very little to do with any SEO to get it ranking up there. The algorithm for the three-pack is completely different than trying to rank for a site. Um, anyways, um, you will need to get those reviews. So that means you'll have to get more of those reviews, and you want to get the most realistic reviews possible. And uh, where would you get those? You'd get those through our private link exchange group, which is just made up of members. And we teach all the members how to do this. And uh, that just means less work for everybody, and we all rise together. Okay? Um, uh, call on in here for people who've already joined. Uh, can the niche guidance be released yet? Yeah. Nope, sorry, we have to wait until December 1st, but if you have questions about that, contact our uh, support at callzoo.com. The support desk people that are on there are not hired to support people, they actually work in the company. Uh, so they're better qualified on here. Dax asks on here, is there any special arrangement or discount for paper call Ninja members? Uh, Dex, there is, but it's extremely limited. You just need to contact our support, but I would encourage you to stay on the webinar. Um, on here, and Gene asks, do you use a tap to call plugin for the mobile? Yes, all of our websites come with tap to call uh, on here. Um, so it already comes with it. Uh, but yes, we do because, uh, well, it depends on the niche, but it's growing. So yeah, everything's going to be a mobile these days. I've heard that uh, PayPal may hold some of your funds if you start receiving uh, payments on here on that. Um, yes, Carl, that's very possible. But that's true not just with PayPal. That's true with any merchant services. 
any credit card service, whatever. Okay. Um, so, and how much, did, how much did they withhold? They withhold, uh, usually 10 to 15%. How do you avoid that from happening? Don't ever get a charge back. Okay. That's it. If you never get a charge back, you'll never be withheld 15%. Okay. That's, that's, that's just the way it goes. Um, and so how do you prevent that? You just log into PayPal, get to know PayPal. And on there, they've got a section on there when somebody goes to hit a dispute button, you've got an option to customize a little pop-up that says, hey, Wayne, stop. Before you do the dispute, just contact the support or just here's my cell number. Just call me and we'll refund your money. Okay. And if you do end, uh, end up getting the dispute, then what you want to do is you want to communicate with the customer and say, hey, I, I, you know, you just hit the dispute button. You didn't try to contact my support, whatever. Help me out. I'll, I'll refund the money immediately. Can you please drop the dispute? It's worth it. Okay. Um, do we have to use Twilio or can we use a current call tracking? You have to use Twilio. Our, our entire system is built on Twilio. And as far as I know, 90% uh, of the systems out there are built on Twilio. And with our system, um, if you pay a dollar, uh, per month for a Twilio number, you, you, you're going to pay exactly the same. There is no upsell. If you pay one cents per minute with Twilio, then you're going to pay one cents a minute with uh, Calls. It's exactly the same. And you have the numbers. You can import them from Twilio or export them out of our system back into Twilio or whatever you want to do with them. You have the most freedom at the lowest cost with Twilio. That's why we chose that. No resemblance, Trace. Exactly. Okay. Uh, Kyle, we, we, we are, Kyle if, if you're just joining us and you got on, um, as long as you join us and you've signed up, then tomorrow you'll get an email from you know, GoToWebinar um, and it will have a link in there to the um, replays. I'll also give it to you as well here towards the end. Um, are you doing single location lead gens or nationwide? Very good question, Phil. I like that. Thinking big. We do nationwide. Um, and it's really important to think that way. So um, don't select a niche that is only in one region. Uh, try to select a niche that is in all regions uh, of the country or countries that you want to target so that you can scale this thing. Because once you've got it dialed in into one city, there's absolutely no reason why you can't. Re, just rinse and repeat the exact same process as you go along. And it's so much easier to know and understand one niche than it is to try to have like, okay, I've got 20 uh, different niches up and then trying to deal with 20 different headaches. It's much easier to be able to say, hey, I'm the specialist in your niche. That's all that we do. Plus, you'll understand it better. You'll be able to grow and scale faster. Um, it's just, you know, it's really the best way to go. When I prefaced this call in the beginning, I shared some numbers, some financial numbers. That's based off of two niches, except for the four sites where there were smaller numbers. Um, uh, do you see ranking differences using dashes and keywords? That's a good question. And the domains and the domains with the dashes, I would avoid those. Too. I should have put that on a slide too. Just make it real, uh, just real normal looking. It's not like you're trying to force the keywords in there. It's just, it's just going to be just words strung together with no spaces and a dot com. Okay. Um, so this is a question that Steve asked as far as uh, with the domain. This is a, a domain question. So he's asking here is best plumber San Diego dot com. Is that a good one? That's borderline. Spammy, in my opinion, um, and you could probably get away with it, but I would try to put something in there, something like uh, "best plumbers pros" or something on that. I just it, the domains and and the the domains are no longer your 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 kind of assets like they used to be. Okay, your domains can be a liability. And if we tr keep trying to force in, you know, the keywords and the, and the city and the location, it's just like, ah, plus you don't want that domain anyways, because what you want to do is you want to rank for plumbers in San Diego 
and then you want to expand that out to ocean view and you want to expand that out on that same using that exact same domain uh, you want to run up and down the coast of california with it and then across the united states to nevada and idaho and boise and idaho falls and blackfoot idaho and blah 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 and you want to work your way all the way across the united states that's what we did that's your best darn bet to do and if you're domain name is pegged to San Diego, it's kind of hard to do that. Plus, Google doesn't like it. I'm just telling you, they don't like it. Um, okay, so going down here, uh, Lauren asks on here, this domain name selected runs contrary to a couple of years ago. Yes, it does run contrary to a couple of years ago because things have changed. Um, Doug writes on here, emergency plumber help. That's a great one. If you want to really narrow in, and that's a great niche to any kind of emergency niche is a great niche to be in, in my opinion. Um, and emergency plumber help. That's that's a great one. It it can apply to any city. It's not location dependent, um, and it's not spammy. It's got a keyword in it. It's got a couple of keywords in there, right? Emergency and plumber. If that's available, I'd grab it. Um, are you doing broad categories or single niches in your category sites? Good question, Phil. Um, it depends on the niche on that. So what it means by broad category and single niche categories is broad category, um, computer repair. So computer repair, if you just said computer repair Phoenix, that gets quite a bit of searches. Uh, but then if you do data recovery Phoenix, see, that's a broader category. Uh, that would be another page. That also probably gets just as many searches or close to. I'm not. I don't know for sure, but it's pretty close to uh, computer repair, which is a general term to data recovery. That would be another keyword. So that would be branching out to another category. A third category within the computer kind of repair niche uh, would be um, PC repair. Uh, uh, and then another one would be laptop. And if you do the searches, you'll see the searches justify it. Um, so it depends on the niche. Learning a lot. Glad I made it. Good. Thank you. We're glad you made it too. Um, have an age domain uh, thesis site. Okay. Thesis is a good theme. Been around for a while. I uh, have a site thesis site uh, and a good niche. We have several city pages set up. So several city pages meaning, you know, they've got a domain name and then they've got uh, like a their your site dot com forward slash Houston, your site dot com forward slash Dallas, your site forward slash dot uh, Fort Worth, so on and so forth. Uh, so that's what they mean by um, several cities attached to it. Uh, and geo targeted, except the duplicate content text on the city pages and old style keyword density. Um, all our pages are indexed because you've probably been around for a while, so you're okay. All our sites are indexed, but rank nowhere. Ah, yeah, that's the deal. Um, it is better to change the content. Is it better to change the content and keywords to your specs um, than link through the exchange? Yes, I would say it is rather than starting all over again. Um, okay, so so this is a good question. So let me just summarize it because some of you may be in this boat too, I'm sure, is that uh, you know your site's indexed. You've done some old school SEO. Uh, you've had the site for a while. Let's say that it's two years plus old. It's just not ranking where you need it to rank. In fact, maybe not even or close. Um, what do you do? Do you just totally scrap it and start all over? You could, um, but uh, you would be better off taking your existing site and restructuring it correctly. Now, I'm going to warn you, Google's going to slap you left and right just for changing the content and the URLs and all that kind of stuff. They're going to slap you left and right for that, uh, and you're going to get slapped into nowhere's land, but then you're going to recover, and you're, and you're going to recover back where you want to be, or, and it's, uh, or you can start fresh. Both is going to be about the same amount of work. And if, if I was betting, then probably eight out of 10 times your older site that you basically redid is going to rank faster than a brand new domain. So that's my two cents. Either way, you can avoid the work. Okay. Posts or pages added every week? Well, it's not added every single week, Danielle. Um, in the first, what I recommend is what I said in the slide there is, is that first week, 
couple of weeks. Just letting Google know, hey, we're adding fresh content to this. That's good stuff. You know, rank us up there because we got some good content for your users. Um, and then we kind of uh, tear it down um, until we're we're at two articles per month until where we where we want to be. If we start to drop, then we start to add some more content to it. So, got it. Oh, sorry, got it. Okay. Do I take on new clients today? I we we take on new clients within our two niches, but uh, that's the kind of class we take on. Um, if you have a bunch of exact match domains, what do you do with them? If you that's a good question, Morris. If they're older and they're aged, um, you can you can rank them as long as the rest of your site is not spammy. Okay, as long as they're older and aged. So if you've already got them. Um, so I would I would I would go ahead and keep them. Just make sure the rest of them's not spammy. The content's not spammy. When we get into anchor text and the backlinks, the backlinks are spammy. You know you know if you take a keyword domain uh, that's rich in keywords and then you start nailing it with every backlink <laughs> coming from outside sources that got some kind of variation of the keyword, uh, Google's just going to say who are you trying to fool. So, um, but if you do stuff like what real sites do out there supposedly real sites do out there um you know you're 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 adding anchor text like the company name the url uh, click here go check the site out for the majority of your backlinks then they're going to be okay um can you use a place that goes in the footer area we we want to place the zip codes um you you can set them in the footer area that's fine and that, there's, there's no problem with that. Uh, we always set them at the bottom of our page. I think either is fine. Uh, can you please put the support? Yes, I'll put the support in and some other links too. Let me just uh, uh, grab it. I have it on a text file. Okay, so what I'm going to put in here is uh, four links that you're going to want to uh, definitely uh, check out. So um, that's the support. That's the bottom one. Um, and then uh, we've got the replay link. So that's, they'll have the replays as the first first two up. It has this one up. This is live, but it just has the recording of this one. Same content that I did last night. Um, and also has the slides and stuff you can download in a PDF form. Um, and the, the, the forward slash training, that's for the future training, uh, and then the pre-sale. Let me go over the pre-sale on here um, because this is important. It's going to end within an hour or so. Where did I put this? Uh, let me just grab this real quick. This will show up. And I'll come right back to the questions on here. Okay, so well, what I've got going on here, and let me just go this really quickly um, on here, but uh, I'll go over all the features and the software and the training. It's 100% different than the paper call Ninja years ago. So this is just up for another two more hours and 50 minutes. That's it. It's done. The price is $297, but when you click on this, just for the next two hours and 15 minutes, it should, if my programmers did it correctly, should be 197. No, I'm logged in, so that's not going to work there. But it is, trust me. So it's it, it, it this it's not 297, it's 197 until this timer hits zero. Okay, so what are you going to get for that? Uh, and this and all of this goes up to uh, 2000 on December 1st. So you get the all new. Uh, Calls it 2.0 software, which the software was built not by a bunch of programmers who were thinking, hey, what would people in the paper call niche want? It was built uh, by the request of myself and my team, who we actually manage these sites and run the business. Uh, so these are all practical uses, uh, not stuff that programmers think up of. So uh, first of all, uh, as long as you've got a PayPal account, it doesn't even need to be a business PayPal account, just any PayPal account. The PayPal account will uh, communicate with the CallZoo account, although we have no access to it, to your PayPal account. 
and it will generate bills in three different types of bills uh, to your clients. And again, this is all off of automation. You gotta understand we manage over 3,000 clients. It has to be automated. So this is very streamlined. Um, we can do a uh, prepay, so they pay before they receive the service. That's what we do for the majority of our clients. Postpay, which is on a weekly basis, so at the end of every week of receiving calls, they get an invoice or a flat rate. Um, and you can customize that. We do primarily prepay, so we ask our customers to pay on their customers the number of leads we can bring in. We ask them, you know, initially you'll pay like two thousand up front, um, and then um, and then once your account uh, then every lead that comes in that's a qualified lead, it's deducted from there. And uh, when it, when it, once it reaches a certain threshold, say like $400, then they start receiving both text messages and email messages on a daily basis to top up their account. And they have links in both the text messages and the emails to so just easily do that, to bring it back up to the 2000 So it's kind of like a pre prepaid phone if you had no credit or whatever. Um, the billing's completely automated. You don't have to do anything with it. Um, and it's reminded to the clients um, by text. You know, everyone checks a text message, but it goes by text message to them with a link in there to pay it immediately um, and also by uh, uh, email. Um, everything is, if you have existing numbers as Twilio's, I know some of you do, you can import those in. You can, you know, export them out of existing systems that you're using, import them into ours. You don't like ours, you can export it back out. It's your Twilio numbers. You can do what you want with them. Um, we provide a, a, a free white label program during this pre-sale time. So that means that you, it's just a one-click install that you don't have to go into your contact your server, make sure you have a no bandwidth, all this kind of crap. We, we made it super easy for people like me. You don't need to know FTP, none of that. Just one click and then you just push it over and then all of a sudden the site shows up on your domain. Um, anyways, it's, it's super, super easy. And, and that's important because you're going to have like a company domain name and then you'll have like a company do domain name, I know, dot members or forward slash members and that's where your members would log in and it would have your logo on it too so it would all look like look and feel like your site not ours um it's important when the customers be given login access to it because what they see is going to help you and them and the first thing they're going to see is graphs and charts of the amount of phone calls that they received the amount that they were answered and the amount that was missed you'd be surprised how many companies miss you know, a good 20 to 30% of their calls, which is 20 to 30% of their revenue, man. It's serious stuff. Um, they need to answer those phone calls. Even if they're paying for them, they got to they gotta answer them. And they probably don't, most of them don't even realize it until the first time they're logged in. They're like, oh my God, I can't believe that. We just paid for, you know, 20 phone calls, but six of them we didn't even answer. Guess what? We got SMS text message in here in our system. So your clients will be text messaged the minute right after the phone call was missed with the phone call so they can just tap it and call it so they don't ever miss a phone call again. And, and I'm talking professional businesses do this all the time too. Um, oh, it's got a lot more in here. Uh, customers never get double billed on here. So if somebody calls from one of our lead gen sites and set an appointment and then they go back to the site a day later and say, hey, I got to reschedule, um, automatically calls you does not bill them double for that. Um, we have a shared list of uh, telemarketers that we blacklist. So any blacklist number, any telemarketer that calls any one of my lead gen sites and they're a telemarketer, I'm going to blacklist them. So guess what? They're going to be blacklisted off all your sites too. And same with if, if any of you receive any telemarketers calling and you hit the black the um, spam blacklist, then they're blacklisted off of all CallZoom member sites. So right off of the gun if you started fresh with some other service um you're going to get you're wide open to all telemarketers here you are probably shielded against 90 percent of them because we've already blocked them for you um we also we also um on our wordpress theme uh we've we ha we have a, a a plugin that we put our wordpress theme to also track the emails as well so because some people don't want to call some people would, will come to the website and they're like, well, I don't want to call. I'd just rather fill out this form and ask somebody to call me back with an estimate or something. And so that's a lead there. So our system fully tracks that. Um, you can pre-qualify the calls. You can customize them um, so that you know, a call that's 
over 60 seconds, the only ones that could build uh, with us, quite frankly, with our company, we just build people from second zero on and let them know that. Um, there's different ways to distribute phone numbers out. So you get, say you say you've got a really hot niche in in Chicago, and you're getting a ton of phone calls, and your one particular um, business can't handle all the phone calls. You can then go out and get others, and then you can round rob them out. And what that means is that each calls get distributed out evenly. Okay, um, or you can do mass ring, um, and uh, that's where you maybe have two to three. Um, uh, clients in the same niche in the same area and when a lead comes in and rings it goes out to all three of the companies and then when the first picks it up gets the sale basically um this got a whole ton tons of other stuff on here um and you've got unlimited number of clients we don't give a cap for this on here we we don't give a cap so if you've got 5,000 10,000 phone numbers we don't give a cap even though we carry that bandwidth um yeah and we've got all the numbers that Twilio does. So if you want to do this in another country, any number that Twilio, it's 204 countries. So, you know, you want to do this in Hong Kong or Taiwan or whatever, there's phone numbers available. Okay, so all the software in the world is not going to do you a whole lot of good unless you've got the proper training. Um, software by itself is just kind of like a really fancy Ferrari without any gas. So here's the gas. Um, first of all is uh, is you will give it access to our private link exchange group. And that's just a group of members on here. It's not outsourcers providing links, okay? It's very important to keep in mind. This is kind of keeping the integrity and the quality of this up to the highest possible standards. Um, and so everyone's given the same training on how to create a private blog network. So everyone has the same standards. Um, and normally what you'd have to do if you didn't belong to this group is, is you know, if you wanted five backlinks from, from a private blog network, you'd have to build five different private blog networks. That's an incredible amount of work because you have to make sure they're on independent IP addresses, you know, all this kind of other stuff to make sure that they look real and you have to make them look real these days. You cannot get away with cutting corners anywhere. They need to have a Google Plus account, okay? All right, let's just be real about it. They need to have a Facebook account, okay? So they got to look real, okay? Um, and uh, so anyways, so maintaining one is a good amount of work. Uh, but if you maintain one then and, and others are maintaining at the same quality, you're going to be able to get 20 uh, backlinks, one from your site and 19 from uh, 19 other sites, from members who build sites just like you do. It's all in the, within the, in the uh, local niche arena. And really for a good medium type site, you only need around four to six backlinks spread over time, not all at once. Um, and it's not just about the backlinks too. You want to have the social signals are enormous. Okay. A huge, huge, huge. So we also do um, like re, re um, you can arrange to have a retweet, retweet exchange with another member. Um, and you don't need a whole bunch of those. This is not like ranking some kind of hard to rank affiliate site or something like this out there. This is some local site. You get a couple of retweets of one of your blogs or posts. Google's going like, wow, that's amazing. People must like you. Uh, you get some Facebook likes um, on here. You get a Google Plus. Um, you exchange some uh, uh, Google Plus reviews. And we I show you step by step in the course some super ninja stuff I guarantee you've never, never, never heard of before on how to make sure that when you open up, say, a Google Plus account, for doing the link exchange that uh, Google cannot tell you, cannot tell that um, that it's fake or anything like that. Okay, so we, we, we go over all that. So this is super, super valuable on here. So we've taken care of the ranking aspect of it. Um, this, I'm, I'm only gonna do this for a very limited time. This alone is worth at least $2,000 because it will literally change someone's life if they're in the online business. And that is, I'm the only, as far as I know, we're the only company in the world that knows how to hack this system. And that is, we can get you in the Google Plus. Remember, it used to be the Google 7-pack. Now it's the Google 3-pack. If you get your site in the Google 3-pack on that, uh, your phone calls are going to easily double. And in order to maintain that, it's not going to be dependent solely on backlinks and SEO stuff. It's a completely different algorithm with that. We cover that all in that Google three pack course and we show you how to do it without getting a postcard verification.
life-changing stuff right there. That alone is worth it all. Weekly coaching calls. Um, I conduct them. Uh, it's all about in the trenches. Usually I'll cover around the first you know, 10 to 15 minutes. In the trenches stuff you need to know. Um, stuff that we're seeing in the marketplace, you know, up to date. You're not going to get any more up to date than that. Um, and then I turn the rest over for questions and answers. I have, I have you pre-send them in, and obviously we, we record them and save them in the members area. Um, the only really, the other thing that really gets people is, you know, how do you get clients? Um, I show you and share with you our, ex our exact uh, Squeedspace template we use to get clients that closes 8 out of 10 every single time it's not even a sale it's super easy this is so easy you can outsource it um and uh, basically how the process works is that we're uh we're offering a week of free leads um we don't even need to talk to the to the, to the decision maker about it this is something you can easily outsource uh to if you're, you're working in the u.s to a u.s uh trained uh telemarketing person that you can hire for you know 15 to 20 bucks an hour um and you don't need to hire them for that long because, you know, usually you've got a, a site that's ranking in Phoenix and you've got 10 businesses there that you'd like to contact. And they're going to contact 10 of them, say, hey, you want seven weeks, you know, seven days of free leads coming in? Then just go to this website, go to this link, check it out. It's going to have a pre-made video for you. All of the bullet points that we come out through, so we're not so we're avoiding the, kick, the tire kickers. They know exactly what they're getting into, that we want to do business with them, that the reason we're offering this is because we want to create a long-term relationship. And what's going to happen on day eight? What's going to happen on day eight? This is going to be the exact price for the leads. This is how the billing process is going to work out. So, so it takes care of everything there, so I'm going to have to explain it. And we bring them in with free leads. And there's tricks and stuff that we use in the trade um, you know, to get them to go to the website. Stuff like you know, right after this phone call, we're calling... You just go down the list or, you know, we're calling, you know, your, you know, your uh, get out of jail now and we're calling your competition right after I hang up here. I'm calling, you know, triple A uh, bail bonds right after this. And I've been the same thing. We're only working with one client. Whoever gets on the, th that link understands it, wants to do business with us long term, gets an intro, right? It's like a friendly first date. Seven days of release. What else can you ask for? Um, super, super easy to do. Um, Anyways, there's there's actually a lot more. I didn't have enough time to put it on the sale page, but that's enough for that. So even though it says two ninety seven here, actually when you click on here, it'll be one ninety seven, and that one ninety seven link, uh, it's already set on autopilot, disappears in two hours. So now's the time to do it. It's at two ninety seven. Next week it'll be three forty seven. Uh, come December first, it'll be a lot more. So if you have any inclinations, now would be a good time. All right, back to questions. Okay, CJ so says, great content. On average, how long does it take to rank for the sites? Depends on the niche um, on that end of it, but I would say anywhere from four to eight weeks. And that's pretty much the same. I gave the analogy of opening up an Amazon store minus having to pay for all the inventory um, and having to reinvest your profits and your income right back into the inventory, at least for the first year to make it grow properly, uh, which no one ever talks about. Um, but, uh, anyways, uh, on average, how long does it take for a, a site for to for four to eight weeks, but then you've got an asset that's bringing you regular income and you didn't have to buy inventory for it. Um, what about on page SEO on one of the multi tiered sites? Good question. So Peter, you have a multi tiered site. This would be an example of one. Let me, sh let me pop up an example one up here. Um, open up another tab. And um, so this is our example here, and you, know, you, you can you know, save these. This is AAA, yeah, AAA Pest Control Pros .com. So that's a good website, by the way. AAA, that's targeting pest control, right? So we've got AAA, so it's gonna, you know, it'll, it'll rank alphabetically in the citations uh, first because it's AAA Pest Control, which is a keyword, and then Pros. Pretty cool, right? So um, that's a good strategy, by the way. AAA, keyword, pros.com. So I'm not going to repeat that again, by the way. Otherwise, everyone will start doing it. Um, anyways, this is just a dummy site for that. But this is for multiple locations. So this first page, uh, 731, this is for Houston. Content, 500 words. 
meta tags we'll go over everything i just said um blog down here all these blogs will then link back to these various home pages so let's take a look at the locations we go to the, to the locations page and yes, with our software and with our themes, you'd have a different phone number for each site and different email capture. So I'd be able to do it separately. You'd also be able to swap out the logos. Sometimes people do want their logos because if they pick up the phone, they start saying, hey, AAA pest control, and they answer the phone, you know, Bob's pest control. We kill them, we kill them bugs now. How can I help you? Uh, then we can put their logo up here. It doesn't affect the SEO. Um, okay, so this would be like our locations page. You could have, you know, 50 different locations on here, but let's just take a look at it. So you just click on here. That's the way we do it for the SEO. And we don't, we didn't make that up. We, we, we do this based on reverse engineering, other franchise companies out there that are successfully ranking uh, on page one for all of their cities. Um, okay. So again, it just be original content. This is San Diego within San Diego. They would have different, uh, communities on here. If you're familiar with San Diego, there's actually quite quite a bit more than this, but it's the same thing. Chula Vista, come on here. There'd be original content on Chula Vista than there would be on San Diego and the other pages. Um, as far as each one of these sites on here, what you're going to find, each one of these sites, that's the way we think about them, but each one of these cities uh, on the same domain um, has to be original content and would have style structures underneath it. Now, what you're going to find is that there's a tipping point that that we've discovered it's usually around city four or five or six once you've got five cities five to six cities ranking on page one uh so say it say i had houston dallas you know san diego miami blah 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 boise ranking those five cities ranking on page one my sixth city is going to pop up to page one really quickly without any kind of crazy silo structures and without any crazy backlinking and it's going to be like that moving forward so uh, building these kind of these multi-city sites rather than an individual ones is well worth the time and effort. There comes a certain point where Google just says, we trust you and you're cool. Uh, and it's usually around uh, five cities or so. That's what we found. So, Okay, if you don't follow any of the SEO courses, how do you find out about this? That's a good question, Hal. And I, follow, I actually share that within the course. So I have a staff of 34, so what we do is we go out and we find, uh, there's enough tools out there to do that these days, right? So we go out there and we find examples of other niches that are ranking, and we reverse engineer the hell out of their sites. And we try to reverse engineer it, and figure out why they're ranking on page one. How many backlinks do they have? What's the keyword density that they're using? How many images do they have? What's the age of their site? Where are their links coming from? What's the source of every single uh, link? What's the trust flow? Blah, blah, blah. Which is a lot more useful than any course out there. And then we take it into the laboratory, which is the real world, and we actually experiment and do it. So that's how we do it. Okay, do, um, so like for like a chicagoplumbers.com, do they need to be geographically close? They don't, but, but the way, the example that I just gave, which is you probably just saw the answer there um, on, on this site here, AAA Pest Controls, is you would have a separate page for the different cities. And then once you click on a city, like say Chicago, then you would have uh, underneath that page, you would have uh, links for the other local areas like um, Aurora, uh, Cicero, Oaks Park, etc. Very familiar with SendWire. Works fantastic for, particularly for videos. Graphically. Okay. Should I abandon an old exact match domain and just play by the new domains? Uh, if it's an old one, I would keep it and just play by the rules with everything else. If it's an old one, say it's a couple years old, um, I would just go ahead and keep it because it's already got a couple years behind it. And as long as everything else is not spam, spammy, the backlinks, the internal uh, anchor links, uh, your keyword density, all that kind of stuff, you should be fine. And and I don't mean that like, uh, you know, just you should be fine, blah, blah, blah. No, I, I mean that based on what's out there in the real world because there are sites with exact match domains that are ranking today. I just gave you one, which was the... If you type in Chicago 
dog groomer, we should show up on page one. Even though we haven't touched the ranking in a long time, that's not even a, an inactive site for us. So yeah, I, I can say that with confidence, in other words. Is all the training and support for the private blog networks? Yeah, for the... Our, for the uh, um, for two years ago when we opened up the paper called Ninja on that end of it, uh, things have changed and there needs to be some updates. Um, and I would highly recommend jumping aboard to get the most recent updates on here. Three centers. Yeah, so Sean, um, yeah, I mean, if, if the niche you're in, you look at the Google three pack and there's like 30, 40, 50 reviews, you got to figure out how to get 30, 40, 50 reviews. Um, if you're determined, anything's possible, but just starting out, man, that's a, that's a hill to climb. <laughs> I would, I would, uh, I would stick with the other criteria, not fall in love with one niche, but get a whole list of them going. Um, you want to get to, uh, profitable niches as quickly as possible. And if you follow the guidelines that I gave in the first niche, uh, that, that will help. Uh, what would be the minimum city population that you would go after? Um, I would say at least, you know, there's so many of them out there. I mean, I would start out with a quarter million or more. I'd try to get as many searches as you could. Um, and then as you start to dry up, you know, there's 20, 25 cities in the U.S. that are all a quarter million above that all have some hefty searches for any kind of niche. And then after you've been in those 25 cities and you're ranking page one, you've got 25 clients in those, you know, you're going to be making twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a month profit, no problem. Then you can start to look at the, you know, the 150,000 niche range, the 100,000 niche range. Okay. Uh, but the lowest I go is about a hundred thousand, but it, but it still needs to have at least the minimum criteria for the number of searches for the keywords, at least 250. Um, Uh, yes, Bob, um, our sales landing page, you get our template and we teach it step by step. I thought that the private blog networks that you link to need to be something to do with your niche to be effective. Well, all of ours are going to be something to do with a local niche. Okay, so it's not like you're going to be getting a backlink from, you know, a make money site or you're going to be getting a backlink from, a, you know, I don't know, some kind of vitamin, vitamin lose weight store, something like that. These are all going to be local niches. And we recommend, which you'll see in the training, is that you'll have your, you, your private blog network should be fairly niche specific to yours. But let's say you're in the automotive niche. Then your, you know, any, any link from any type of automotive type niche, which is a huge category, by the way, uh, would be considered relevant. If you're in the health niche, which is, could be, it's a very broad range from personal trainers to cosmetic dentists to rhinoplastic surgery to boob implants. Health niche is huge. So anything to do with health niche would be relevant. And then anything to do within your local niche is, is going to be relevant too. And we only need a few links. Uh, course is available December 1st. Presale is now. Lowest price you'll ever see is for the next two hours. Um, Okay, see Wolf. If you need to recap, go to the sales page, and if I have time towards the end of this, um, I would recap. But if you got specific questions, just for the existing members, uh, go into the um, support desk at support.callzoo.com. Uh, Chris has in here hosting. Do you have? Add-on domains. I'm not sure what you mean by add-on domains. Um, scaling, outsourcing, sales remains the biggest weakness. Not if you're doing it the way we do it. It's super simple. I've never been in a sales environment myself. While well, I can do it, others are much better at it than me. Yes, this is covered in the program too. Um, and there's, it, it's, be. You can hire these. You can hire dynamic, really talented, uh, basically kind of career telemarketing uh, persons. Usually, usually the the female ones are the best ones, um, and you can see all their reviews. Um, at, 
Odesk or whatever they changed their name to. You can see all the reviews, how many hours they've worked. You know, you're not going to hire somebody that's brand new. You're going to hire somebody that's in demand, that has, you know, hours and hours that they've put in and tons of reviews. And you can clearly see, oh, this person is really good. Your type of selling, if you hired them, is going to be the easiest type of selling that they've ever done in their entire lives. Because they're what you're going to be offering the customer, the end result is going to make their eyes wide open. It's going to be like offering uh, liquid gold to them. You're going to be giving them, you're not, look, you're offering them free leads as, as, a, as, as the intro to a business relationship. Um, we're not offering SEO where, well, we hope to get results in three to six months, blah, 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 blah. We're not offering, you know, to do a Google AdWords campaign where they've got to put up, you know, $2,000 and we're going to promise them probably in the first month we might break even. Uh, we could lose some and it's a, you know, it takes a while to get that dialed in. None of that bullshit, which they're getting phone calls all the time for, by the way. Okay. So what you have is completely unique. And then, and then, and then the people who, who are interested in this, and the people that that that, that will pull the trigger on this, are, are too busy to to want to sit and talk with you on the phone about it. Way too busy. So they're really going to appreciate that you've taken the time to use our template, our video, our everything, um, to just go to a website and just clear lay it out. Just boom, boom, boom. This is exactly what it is. And this is exactly who we're looking for. If this doesn't fit, a, if if this doesn't sound like a match to you, then don't worry about it. We're going to give this to your competitors. We'll, we'll just move on down the street. Um, and so it's very straightforward. And um, eight out of ten times it, 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 it closes. So, Okay. Um, how do you cope with a domain that's, a domain that's designed to target a number of different cities off of the same site? I, I've already answered that. Um, and we cover that fully in the course. And, and that's the way we build all of our sites. Um, like Chris, review style sites, sites that have three to five providers on one page, um, a little like Service Magic uses for PVC landing pages. Have you ever tested these? Any thoughts? I haven't. I haven't tested them. Minimum size of population, 100,000 is the minimum, but just there's 25 cities in the U.S. that have a quarter million or more. Just go for those to start out with. Any recommendations for campaign uh, pay-per-click AdWords campaign? Uh, not this time around. Do you use retargeting? Um, yes, we do do pay-per-click, a lot of it, uh, to the tune of about fifteen to $20,000 per day. Uh, and we do, do do retargeting. But um, at this time, we're not covering that. Um, I've covered that. Uh, no, Max, we actually have to do contact the clients. Um, yes, Alan, in our list of 2000, there's a tax account in there. Mommy makeovers options. Yeah, that'll, that's not spammy, right? Um, I'm not quite sure what mommy makeover options. I'm not sure what NIST that is, but I'm not. Uh, we're just in two niches. I don't know what all of them are. Um, so would you use the same domain and go after multiple cities? Yes, across the nation. Yes, yes, and yes, definitely, Alex. Do they have their own location? pages yes they each have their own location pages on at their own separate pages with on with with on within the domain that's exactly how we do it diagramchicago.net is yours yes are you doing pages and posts for added cities and generic domains and not subdomains yes so we're yeah we're not using subdomains so we're using Pages for all cities, pages for like contact us, uh, pages for you know disclaimers and stuff like that, and anything to support the pages 
uh, with our silo structure, we use posts for those. Um, you can rank videos. You can rank videos. Um, you're going to need... Ranking videos is not that hard. I mean, I mean, basically, you need to get a source of realistic views. You need some decent backlinks. And you want to try to get those sites on are those videos um, embedded on high quality sites. That's another source of backlinks people don't don't use, but is is good. So you could use that within you you, you could do that within the uh, um, backlinking community. You could say, hey, I've got a particular YouTube video. If if I can embed it on on one of your posts that I provide the material for, can I get a reciprocal with that? And then someone else will do the same on yours. Anytime you get a video that's embedded on a good quality site, that's one of the better backlinks you can possibly get for it. Yeah, Sean, uh, Dog Grooming Chicago.net is not a good domain or name, but we're still ranking on page one. Uh, but that site's three years old. So. Uh, yeah, Colin, you can sh give access to the software to your family or VAs or whatever you want. Where do you direct the phone inquiries while you're working on ranking that before you have a client? So that's a good question, Keith. Um, you will redirect those uh, as we go over on the course. Uh, we recommend that you redirect those if you have nobody to do them in the beginning uh, to a, a, a Skype number with a um, voicemail box. Um, and then that's all the more reason why um, our free, free week of leads works because as you start getting those phone calls in, you want to start dumping them off to somebody right away, a qualified prospect. Can I resurrect, resurrect, res, resurrect, getting tired here, a low ranking uh, paper call site that has been... Um, stagnant by adding new posts and regular schedules yes you most definitely can but and you want to make sure that it's not spammy that you don't have a, a, a spam to it as well and uh okay so i'm just going to check something really quickly here the next one does the old kazu st stuff still work um a lot of the seo stuff is been kind of outdated that's why we've um updated it and then updated it with what's the best way we can possibly give members new members um the chance to rank on page one and the way that you're going to do that is going to be through the linking community rather than, you know, outsourcing to uh, somebody that you don't know and who's probably not going to be as careful as everyone else is. And plus we, we don't need a whole lot of um, links in order to uh, rank on here. Um, okay. So let me go down these questions. CJ, okay. Thank you, CJ. Appreciate that. Uh, do you have any uh, Australian clients? We do. We're in uh, my company within our two niches. We're in every English-speaking country, continent in the in the world. So yes, uh, Twilio is extremely limited. Yeah, it is on that compared to what you have in the U.S. Are there any other phone number providers besides that? We haven't found any. We just use what we have and rank our sites, and everyone's fine with it. Um, but you know, don't, we, we didn't start there. We started in the U S and, um, that's a good place to start no matter where you are. How is the privacy address for both the caller and the, how is the privacy, how is the privacy address for both the caller and the answer? Does the caller know? Hmm. Not quite sure I understand that question. How is the privacy address for both the caller and the answerer? So the person who's calling and the privacy. I'm not quite sure what that means. So if you want to redirect that question at the bottom, I'll answer it. Uh, yes, Barb, you're ready to join. This is the lowest price you'll see even for paper call members. Okay, CJ. Thank you for the spelling ninja. Are you pushing links to your inner post sites as well? Yes, we cover that in the course, and that would be a backlinking question. We'd answer 
an answer uh, ne next week. But yes, we we do do interlinks, and and uh, you're most definitely going to want to do that. Um, Uh, Dax, the the thing that we use works, and uh, let's see here. Are some cities more profitable than others? For example, a bigger population with more potential. Yes, so uh, definitely more cities are more profitable than others. So um, the more searches a city has for the same keywords, uh, you know, the same keywords is going to bring you more phone calls, thus more profitable. Phoenix over Seattle. I don't know. Uh, Google AdWords will tell you which are your keywords. You have to compare it with Phoenix and Seattle. And they'll tell you which ones have more. Limited bonus for the three pack. How do we confirm that you have access to it? Anyone who purchased in the pre sale has access to it. So your pre sale. Um, is there a step by step checklist? Yes. Just signed up. Congratulations. So would this still work for someone who's never done this before? Yes. Uh, this is step-by-step -step beginner from the beginning. If you've never even installed the WordPress before, you don't even know how to install a plugin. Uh, uh, nothing is left to chance on here. How long to get the three pack up and running? Uh, well, you have to get a site. So you got your, you have to get your site up and running. Um, and then I would say three weeks. Um, yes, this is all different for, for, ex for existing, um, paper call ninja members. Um, yeah, th this is all different material on here. So just rest assured of that. Okay. So let's see. Does video, uh, does video assist with the ranking of sites? If you simultaneously create a video and submit it to YouTube. Well, we, Mike, that's a good question. We, the way we teach and recommend and the way we do it is that um, when we embed on the header, um, our uh, uh, video, we embed that from, and we host it on YouTube. So we have that going for us. Uh, and then if you want to, you can also take that video uh, and try to rank the video separately in addition to your site uh, in the SERPs as well. So you have multiple properties up. Are some of those niches very competitive, i.e. attorney and insurance? Uh, the niches that, that we're in, our two main niches, I would say are our medium competition. Um, different pets video too, yes. How much would we expect to have to spend to build a private blog network? As I recommended, one private blog network is gonna, total is gonna cost around 40 to 50 bucks. Um, and that's a, you know, that's a good quality one um, are you actually going to highlight your client on any of these pages like talk about them uh, not my niches I'm not going to reveal my niches um, I've, I've, I've done that before and that's an absolute horror mistake <laughs> but so no it's just like if you had a, somebody who's got a multi, you know, a very successful Amazon store, they are never going to share their products. Um, is duplicate content still safe? Good question, CJ. Absolutely not. Everything's got to be 100% original content. Don't, don't, don't mess. Don't try to cut corners with that. It's, 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 it's not going to be worth it. You might get away with it for a while, but it's not a long-term strategy. Okay, so that's, that's a good question, Dax. How much time do you need to be putting into this on a daily and weekly basis to get the sites built out and stuff? Um, I would say reasonably. Um, say the four sites that I showed you at the beginning of the case study there, where since the beginning of the year they brought in 36000 and per month around 2500 That's four sites, same niche. Uh, f uh, it just It's same niche, same domain, four different cities. So I should clarify that. Um, that's about four to six hours work per week. Um, so yeah. Do you need to build any crazy backlinks, um, uh, to get these to rank? Um, I've addressed that, uh, exciting stuff. Can't wait to get started. Congratulations. Uh, with a multi-location site, how do you determine the phone number to put on the root domain? 
Yes. No, um, we never use an 800 number. Uh, the, the people just don't like to call those. Um, so it's like on the root domain, uh, on the example I gave here on the AAA uh, pest control pros, the root domain is actually Houston. Um, and it'll have a Houston number on it. And then the San Diego page will have the San Diego number and so on and so forth. CJ, the difference between the 2.0 and the 1.0 is like night and day, 100% different. How do you capture from leads without having to double opt in? Okay, so so Dax, we just uh, it, it's we're not using an autoresponder to do that. Basically, what we're doing is we're taking the leads that come in uh, through the Callzoo plugin. Uh, if a customer, you know, if if it's a lead, say you got a plumber site and somebody, you know, they're saying, hey, I, I'm going to re remodel my kitchen. I need some leads. These are my dimensions, blah, blah, blah. And they email it in. It goes directly to your customer. And then your customer then has access to that email, that customer. They respond back to them. They can call them back. They're in charge of it. You've sold it to them. And that's that's the end of the story. We treat it just like a phone call. Um, we're not treating it like internet marketers, like um, like like what you're thinking there. Hey, Chris, I'm ready to join again. Thank you so much. Um, Pre-sale price. Uh, yep. If you've had this, is the best you're gonna see, Barb. This is this call right here. This is the best you're gonna see ever. Uh, so you know, grab it while you can. In two hours, it goes up two ninety five, even for existing members. Do you touch on any paid advertising in the course? Uh, Chris asks. Uh, at, 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 at this time, no. Uh, but we do do it in our business. Uh, do all the stuff you get taught, past, present, ranking for YouTube videos still apply? Um, if I've taught some stuff in the past... And I haven't taught stuff about how to rank YouTube videos in a couple of years. Any kind of written material on that from a couple of years ago, uh, I would guess that probably 70% of that is outdated. Just join, no brainer. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I'm in, says Sal. Thank you, Sal. Appreciate that. You won't be disappointed. Your national net site seems to show a single city on the first page, yes, and then other city locations. And their locations, yes, and then when you click on those, um, I have a site with a generic homepage and service areas, tabs, uh, drop downs for the cities, and AdWords, et cetera, points to specific city pages. Is that okay? Um, it could be. Uh, it would be fine to do that, um, but understand you're going to be, what you're going to be ranking for is, is, are those city pages. Those are the ones that are going to show up in the search engines. Um, not the not the page that has a whole bunch of pages linking to it, but that's okay. That, that that'll work. Um, when will the replays be taken down? Um, probably gonna take those down in the next seventy two hours. Did you say you have uh, the members network leave reviews? Yes, for each other. Yes. How do you address the Google terms of services and risk of doing that? It's a great question, Mark. So let me take a drink, drink of water and I will address that because that is a great question and we have it figured out. So we have a very specific step-by-step -step method um, that I don't think anyone else is using. Okay, it, It's a system that my team uses uh, and we developed and we don't sell the service. Okay, So we just do it internally. Um, and again, this is systems that work for us for thousands of sites and literally hundreds, well, no, I wouldn't say hundreds of thousands, but thousands and thousands of reviews. Um, so we have a what I would call a propriety system that we're going to teach you. Um, and when you see it, you'll you'll be blown away by, by both how ingenious it is, but also you'll know no matter whether you're a beginner or not, that, that, that system, you're going to feel a lot of trust in it. But basically, we figured out a way, um, my team has, to that you're able to um, log in, get a Gmail account, um, have activities that you would do with a Gmail account, um, and give reviews, 
uh, not just to other members, but you have to make it realistic. So you'd give it to other sites too um, to make it r realistic. Um, that would never, there wouldn't be one single footprint that would ever come back to you, your computer, or anything. Um, and anyways, I'll, I'll just leave it at that, but the details are there. So that's a, that's a huge risk, right? You don't want to be, uh, you know, getting, this is, we weren't going to put the risk of going to some kind of, uh, you know, outsourcing mill firm to get some kind of reviews. I mean, Fiverr's like no way, but, uh, so. Yeah, uh, Kendra, yeah, uh, jump on now. Now's your best time to do it, my friend. Um, I had to step away for a few minutes. May have missed it. Can you explain to what extent that you need a real address associated with your people? You don't need a, a real address. You need an address that will show up on Google Maps. So that's as real as it needs to be. How many sites do we need to create for our private blog network? How many sites do we need to create for our private? Um, well, one private blog network uh, done to our, our group standards um, is going to be equivalent to 20 backlinks to your sites. So that. Um, we also show you how, I, I, there's so many other things I haven't explained, but like we, uh, we also show the group how to get um, uh, high trust authority web 2.0 sites that have high trust authority and that way you don't have to host them nothing none of that stuff and to treat those as private blog, blog networks as well so it adds to the diversity but it doesn't cost you anything um and that's really cool too and uh i don't know anyone else that's doing that as well anyways um so so uh we would also be getting some backlinks so one of those would also get you 20 backlinks as well now you now keep in mind with a combination of the social signals, the reviews, add in the good quality content, um, you're probably only going to need, depending on how competitive the niche is, okay, it's always that caveat there, uh, somewhere between four to six good quality backlinks, okay? Um, so, you know, you, you can kind of figure it out there. It, it's, it really helps out when, the, when we're all working together to do this. The training, well, the training starts on November 25th. The first coaching webinar will be on the November 25th. Um, so technically that's when the training will start, but the, the, the doors don't open until the 1st of December. Okay, let's see here. I'm doing good with questions. Wow, I've got a lot more. I'm going to start buzzing through these questions. we still got 10 people on the call, so no one's fading off, so that's cool. Maybe I'm the only one paid off. Any Web 2.0 backlinks? Uh, yes, we do, and we'll teach you how to do that. But not just any Web 2.0 websites, Web 2.0 websites that are aged and have trust authority and that you can capture them. Okay, it's really cool to do that, not just brand new ones because those, nah, those will help, but they're not as effective. Is there any way to best avoid being too competitive with each other? Uh, what if too many people pick the same niche and pursue it? Um, that's a good question. Um, what's going to happen in a situation like that is that uh, it hasn't happened yet, thank goodness. Um, but uh, part of your research doing the niches is that you're going to be in there um, with the with the keyword terms. You're going to search them on the Internet. And you're going to see the other sites that show up. You want to study those other sites, your competitions. You're going to click on the links. You're going to get to know them, uh, get to get a better feel for the environment and whatnot. Um, and, uh, you know, as long as you don't see anything, you'd be able to recognize um, one, of the, one of the members, I think, even if they didn't use the same thing, you, you would be able to recognize them. Um, so in that case, then... If you decide to go into that niche, uh, then I would just, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd either want to back off and pick another niche, or if you decide to stay in that niche, um, then at least use a different theme than what the member is using. Um, and, you know, there are 10 spots. There's actually more than 10 spots. There's actually 16, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22 spots on page one, including the paid advertising. So there's plenty of room on page one. 
but that hasn't happened to date. It doesn't mean it won't happen. Um, so. Okay, so CJ says in here, just for two days ago, uh, teaching that you can take uh, different articles, copy them, use spun rewrite, and just use the same content numerous times over local cities, allegedly duplicate content. Uh, is that true? It's, I don't know where you heard that, uh, but uh, maybe someone else has figured it out, got it to work. We, we used to do it that way, um, but um, we, we don't anymore. Um, and I'm just sharing with you what we actually do. And we take the little bit extra time to put original content on it. And it doesn't just come from uh, fear. If you want to go out and actually look at the real world, just check out uh, the Rotor Rooter site. That's a huge nationwide plumbing site. I mean, uh, their website has like over 4,000, 3,500 plus pages. Uh, and they're in over 200 plus cities. But in 90% of their cities, they're not even ranking on page one, two, or three. And when you go to look at the Roto-Rooter site and you break it down and you look at their site and you start to say, okay, you type in San Diego plumber, okay, they're ranking there uh, on page one. But then you start to rank some other cities and type in you know, plumbing in the city name and they're not even anywhere around. And then you start looking around and you go, wait a minute, they have the exact same content on their pages for Mesa, Arizona, as I do for Chandler, as I do for Scottsdale, as I do for Peoria, but they're not ranking anywhere on page one. In fact, they're lost. Well, why is that? Because they're, they're, they're considered an authority site in some cities, okay? Well, every single city is duplicated. And then I can share with you other case studies of other franchises who are ranking number one on all those sites. And one of the, com and one of the main differences is they all have original content. They haven't duplicated it. So, I'm just saying, um, I'm, not a, I'm not opposed to duplicate content, okay? It, I can, I can, you know, we can all name off, if we know a little bit, bit about SEO and understand the game, we can all name off, you know, many, many sites that have built into multi-million dollar sites by purely using duplicate content. But this is an offline local niche game. It's different than the rest of the world out there, okay? Um, and we used to do duplicate content for the home pages and stuff. We stopped it. Okay. So I'm sharing with you best practices and I'm sure other people could show if, you know, ask for case studies, look at it and maybe they're getting away with it now. But what happens when Google starts to tighten up their algorithms some more and they're asking for more high, high quality content. Oh, uh, we're not using Facebook to generate leads. Nope. I just haven't seen that. I, I don't see people go on Facebook and say, I want to get a plumber. I don't see people go on Facebook and say, man, I really need a, you know, a car wash. I just, I need new transmission. I just don't see that yet. So that's why we haven't gone there yet. Uh, my guess is pay-per-click, Google pay-per-click AdWords, reasonable alternative to SEO. It is 100%. I'm in. Thanks. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate it. Appreciate your trust. Um, if this is the cheapest price we recall, uh, we don't, CJ, I'm sorry. Um, can you extend uh, 24 hours, pulse it, contact our support? Good, I'm glad you're looking forward to starting, Barb. With a multiple location site, do you have a uh, generic main page or just one of the cities. We don't have a generic main page, Doug. Our just, just our, we just go our root domain is going to be whatever city we start at. It'll just be our root domain is going to be Houston or Phoenix or Miami or San Diego or, you know, whatever. And then once we get in there, we have that profitable, then we're going to expand out to another city. That's where we go. Our domain name forward slash the next city name. Okay, um, bup, 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 bup. if you have pet control site and on a city page, you talk about earlier clients by name on that page. Yeah, if we're doing multiple cities and you're using our WordPress theme uh, for our call zoo theme, then um, 
there is an option to swap out the header, the um, the logo for your uh, customer's logo so they don't get, get confused with the name. So people call in. That's not a, as big an issue as you might think it'd be. Um, but that option is there. Uh, thank you, CJ. Um, can you get multi-city websites to be in the three-pack? Yes, no problem. In different cities, yes. Take some work, but you can do it. And it's well worth it. For multi-locations, um, I looked at your theme. Okay, Doug, for local evictions. Yes, that works. Good stuff. Thank you. Signed up. Thank you, Sean. Just signed up. Thank you, Lou. If you're in the three-pack and Google discovers that you're not a real physical address location, what will they do? And this has ever happened to you. They'll just remove it. That's it. But they don't penalize you as far as SEO, but they'll just remove it. Uh, we go to great lengths, and we train to great lengths to make sure that that, that doesn't happen. When you say good quality of backlinks, what sort of uh, majestic trust flow are you talking about? Uh, it's at least a 25 or more. Um, and something's broadly related. Okay. So anyways, yeah, I'll just leave with that. Okay, Archie, so um, contact our support. We'll get you taken care of, so don't, don't worry about that. We'll get, take, you get you taken care of today, so no, no worries with that. Um, do you share with us a good place for getting good content written? Um, there are some sources out there like iWriter and stuff, um, and, and we have some of those in there. Um, uh, I would recommend... For your and I do this, or I'll I reiterate this in the training is that for your home pages, um, that you until you've got somebody trained that knows how to do it, that uh, you you know carefully oversee that yourself. If not, do that yourself. Just signed up, Dax. Thank you. Um, Gordon asks on here. Um, How do you um, how do you say we should handle the local address required for each unit city? We we, we covered that in the course, so don't, don't even worry about that. We got that, boom. We got that cut, taken care of. <laughs> they will come and get you in the middle of the night, ha. Huh? Okay. You're using uh, plugins for WordPress security. Uh, we've had a lot of issues with malware. Yeah, de definitely. There's you, you have to keep everything updated. There's no doubt about it on your WordPress. I mean, the minute they need to be updated, you've got to you've got to update them. Um, uh, templates are done and ready. Yes. The K two good. Oh, we're good. Okay. The Cosy WordPress theme is available Jax. yes and all of it will be available on the first okay so we've done pretty good there with our time i've got through the questions so i'm going to give a just a five minute whistle here our last minute call for questions i should say i've just answered my last one there um checking the time here um and uh yeah we've done good we've uh we've, we've gone over i've uh in uh, answering questions for just about an hour and 20 minutes. So that's pretty cool beans right there. So if you're, if you're going to do this, uh, uh, w wait until the first, uh, Dex, thank you. Uh, Larry, good night to you too. Okay, awesome. So that's it. Uh, what do we got left on our timer on here on our pre-sale uh, page? All right, one hour and, and 50 minutes. A lot of people have already jumped in, so I'm, I'm really happy about that. And uh, so you're getting a fantastic deal, obviously. So anyways, I'm going to call that a night. Appreciate everybody uh, joining on here. Uh, and uh, 
And if you have any other questions, uh, please uh, contact the support on that. That's support.callsview.com, support.callsview.com. Thank you so much. Have a good day or night wherever you are. Bye-bye.